Hello, and welcome to This Week in James City County. I'm your host, Renee Dahlman. Today, I am joined by Sharon McCarthy. Sharon is the Director of James City County's Financial and Management Services Department. Welcome, Sharon. Thank you. It's good to be here. Good to have you. And we are also joined by Dale Gallagher. Dale is James City County's Director of Real Estate Assessments. Welcome, Dale. Thanks, Renee. Good to be here. Glad to have you. Now, I know that spring is always, well, we're still in winter, but I'm being wishful thinking that spring is right around the corner. And that is a busy, busy time for the folks in financial and management services. And Sharon, I think you are going to be with us today to kind of set the stage about what it is we're talking about today, the world of reassessments. Yes, absolutely. Again, thanks for having us here today. Uh, what we're hoping to achieve today is really to talk more about the process, the real estate reassessment process itself um, versus the results. The data is very much still under review and we're working our way through that. Um, we will be doing a presentation on February 27th at one of the board meetings on the results of the reassessment. Uh, but today the focus is really on the process itself. Um, we find it's very helpful for residents to understand uh, the process. Um, and it, it's certainly helpful for us. And through those discussions, I think we just all gain a better understanding. All right. Well, Dale, you are the assessment man, so we're going to let you take it away. Thanks, Renee. Let's start where we start as an appraiser, and that's with sales. James City County does assessments every two years. Therefore, we're taking two years of sales. The area we are looking at happens to have 27 valid sales in this two-year period. A valid sale is a willing seller and a willing buyer with no obligations to buy. The sales that we do not use are family sales, foreclosure sales, trustee sales, and new construction, to list a few. The Department of Taxation has a list of non-qualifying sales, and we use that list as a guideline as well. Now let's look at the sales next to the assessed value of 2022 and to see if we're at fair market value. The state code does require us to be at fair market value. At a glance, we see the sale price versus the valuation, and it appears we are not at fair market value. I do know these homes are similar in size, quality of construction, and year built. Even these homes do not always sell at the same price. As we look down the list, we see how the sale prices compare to the assessed value, and it continues to show that we are not at fair market value. I would like to point out here by the look of the assessed value, these homes are similar, but selling from 180 to 220,000 in a very short period of time. The appraiser tries to find out if there's something incorrect with our data or is it the market. We want to find out if there is a reason why this is selling so differently. Or again, is it just the market? Now I point out these three sales, but we do this with all the sales. And we are going to come back to these three in a, in a bit. To help us more, we look at the sales ratio. The sales ratio is the assessed value divided by the sale price, which equals a sales ratio. We already know we're not a fair market value from the last side we saw. The second thing is we look at the ratios from the top to the bottom. The sales ratio in early 22 are in the low 80s and the 23 sales ratio are in the low 70s. We see a trend that the market is going up. The lower the ratio, the higher the market is compared to our assessed value. The sales ratio is just another tool that we use to see if we are at fair market value and in what direction is the market moving, if at all. We're also looking for outliers. That's where a sales ratio may be significantly higher or lower than the other ratios whether it's the market or incorrect data that's causing it. The next slide is going to show us assessment values being brought to fair market value. Remember I mentioned the first slide, we were, going to, we were validating sales and we were gonna check our data. I brought back those three sales. In the assessed value 22 column, these three homes assessed very close in value, but the assessed value in 24 the last home increased a bit more than the other two. Now this home could have had data corrected, maybe something like the home 
had significantly upgrade done, or maybe the other data that had its value increased a bit more than others. As we compare the columns, now the assessed values are more in line with the sale prices. We already know from what we learned in the first couple slides that the home sale prices were at a steady increase from early 22 to late 23. So that is why we are at a higher ratio in 22 than we are in 23. It also seems like the market is beginning to tighten a bit, but still have a few outliers. But we are now closer at fair market value, which is where we are required to be. Dale, I have a couple of questions. Um, and I, I may be putting you on the spot. I really hope that I'm not. Um, what are some examples of things that could cause such a change in the value, valuation of the house? I mean, are these folks that have put in a pool or have added a bedroom or how? Do, what typically causes that? Good question. It, it could be something that was added on to the home that we did not have. Um, sometimes it's just could be the square footage. There was incorrect data on our square footage. So those are the kind of things that will drive the value and a change in value, square footage, fireplaces, bathrooms, things like that. Okay. Um, bedroom counts don't really uh, change that. They don't change value for us. It's really driven by square footage, um, garages, outbuildings, those those type of things. And really, at the end of the day, it's what the market will bear, correct? Sure. So That is correct. That yes. You could have a buyer that was willing to pay a little bit more for a house yeah. without a whole lot of changes on that day compared to their that neighbor. Is, that is okay. correct. Okay, very good. Now, so these assessments or reassessments will be going out to homes beginning the end of the month. And now, first question, will all county homeowners receive one or will they only receive one if their reassessment has changed? That's correct. Only if their reassessment has changed will they get an assessment notice. Okay. Okay. Very good. And then what if they get that piece of mail, they're opening it up at the mailbox and they're like, well, this can't be right. This isn't, I disagree. What do they do then besides yelling into the vo void with, you know, their paperwork in their hands? Yeah, that's a good question. So we do offer an appeal period, which starts okay. March 1st, and that goes for 30 days to the end of the March 30th. And they can call in. Uh, we will go over with them the sales that we've used for their particular neighborhood. Um, and the appraiser that does that neighborhood, that knows that neighborhood, will look at the sales, go over the sales, correct our, our We'll also look at our data to make sure our data is correct. So we'll have that conversation with the property owner to make sure everything's where it needs to be. And then we'll go through the sales with them and why their assessment changed and why it changed the value that it did. Okay. Do you all ever go out to see the homes? Is our home visits part of it? Or are you typically able to tell enough by what you have? Yes. Okay. So new new constructions, we certainly will go out and we're, we're measuring homes or we're, we're collecting that data. A homeowner can call. Uh, we often get calls because they think maybe something is wrong with the square footage or the data. And we'll certainly go out and we'll, we'll remeasure it to make sure, again, that our data is correct. So uh, we do a little bit of everything. If somebody puts on a new deck, we'll go out, we'll measure it and put it on, on the property record card. Okay, very good. And so then finally, what if they've gone through all of that and they just still disagree that this cannot be right? Do they have a next step that they can do? Yes, they do. Um, there is the call again, they call the office. That's great. Um, but if we still can't come to an agreement where the assessed value is, we have uh, the BOE, which is the Board of Equalization. And those are, we actually have a pretty good board. They're, they're appraisers, they're lawyers, they're all, in, they're all in the real estate market. So they'll take a look at what we assessed it for, and then they'll take the homeowner, what they feel it was, and they'll, they'll make the decision whether um, to, to keep the assessment as it is or change it. Okay. And how does this board get formed? The board is picked by the board of supervisors, okay. and then that, the board of supervisors pass that along to the circuit court judge and then they appoint they appoint these uh the the BOE members. Okay. And so these are folks from our very own community that is that correct. are on this board. Okay. And I think that's that important correct. for people yeah. to know. And yeah. folks that volunteer their time to 
to do right. this and to make sure that everybody is getting a fair deal. Right. Um, right. which is awesome. Yeah. Um, what else can you tell me about this? Is there any other groups or agencies that are involved with any of this process? Yeah, that's a great question as well. You know, I know you've heard Dale reference data a lot, um, and it really comes down to having accurate data. We've all heard junk in, junk out. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's really about making sure we have the accurate information. There's not a personal bias that goes behind the numbers. Um, we're not given a goal and, and trying to chase down a certain number in revenue, um, those types of things. It's really a bunch of equations and ratios um, and making sure that we really have accurate property uh, data. And so if a property owner does have a question about their assessment, um, as Dale had mentioned, certainly give us a call at the real estate assessment office. That's a great place to start. Um, you'll actually be able to speak to the assessor, um, the actual assessor about your specific property. And then also other factors that may come into play that are outside of your specific property, maybe more neighborhood driven, you know, those kinds of things. Um, and a change in assessment is certainly possible, certainly if, if our data is incorrect. So we wanna make sure that we start there and we have the accurate information. Um, outside of a data change, um, a property owner can appeal the decision um, during the appeal period uh, that we've, we've talked about, the 30-day window, um, and also with that outside agency, which is the Board of Equalization. And, and their whole point is, is to look at things from a more independent, objective viewpoint. Um, and again, looking at the data um, that is provided and hearing both real estate assessors' information as well as the property owner's information. Um, again, our office hours are Monday through Friday from 8 to 5 p.m. Our phone number is 757-253-6650. And we're located here at Mounts Bay, uh, 101 Mounts Bay. Uh, building F is the actual location of the building that the real estate office uh, resides in. And also there's a ton of information on the county's website, jamescitycountyva.gov backslash 386 will take you directly to specific information related to public meetings, the real estate assessment process itself. We have some frequently asked questions that are available out there. And frankly, we listen to what the residents are asking and that's how we come up with our frequently asked questions. So we, we like to update that every year as well because the questions change, particularly as the market changes. We're in a very different market now than we used to be. So um, one other thing I did wanna mention, you'd asked about you know independent other agencies that may look at our information. Certainly the Board of Equalization is looking at properties that are appealed, but not every property is appealed. Mm -hmm. Right. So um, there is a process that's actually dictated by the Code of Virginia where we are required to submit our information from the reassessment process um, to the state on an annual basis. That's not just for James City County. That applies to all localities throughout the state of Virginia. Um, and the Virginia Department of Taxation takes that information and they do their own analysis. Um, they refer to it as an assessment sales ratio study. Um, and what they're doing is they're looking for uniformity across property classes, across jurisdictions. So they're using the data that we're providing and they're comparing that to other jurisdictions to make sure we're within certain percentages um, in order to determine that we are being comparable and that those properties have been properly assessed at fair market value. Uh, and again, they have their own equations um, and ratios we have to stay between. They're using ratios that are guided by the International Association of Assessing Offer Officers, which we refer to as IAAO. Um, and so again, those ratios are making sure that we're within those, those uh, ranges. And if we're not, they'll question our data. Um, and then that we engage in conversations with them. And uh, long story short, the state's using that information to determine how they're going to allocate state funding. And so it's important that we get those numbers right um, so that we can make sure that, that we receive the revenue that we're due. Okay. So to recap, there's going to, for some of us, not everyone, there's going to be, if their property value reassessment has changed, they will receive a letter from the county. Is the paper on the envelope, will it be blue again this year? Isn't it normally blue? Is that ringing um, the bells? I don't know. Actually, it'll be a postcard this year. It'll be a postcard. Yes. Okay. See, for some reason, I remember blue from years and gone past. Yeah, I don't. I I don't know what the day is, but I can remember apparently at some point, y'all sent me a blue a, letter. It was such a pretty blue. Yeah, it was blue. <laughs> now, this postcard that's coming, 
it's not going to include tax information, right? That this is your reassessment and this is what your new tax rate is. Correct. It will it will include the current tax rate. Okay. Um, and it will include it will include the past three years, so 2023, 2024, and 20 the new assessment for 25. Okay. And the percentage increase. Okay. But coming in April, we go into our whole broad budget. But it's a Monday. We go through our whole budget process, and Sharon, you'll be back on explaining all of that to us. And that's where all of that comes into play, right? That's really where it all comes together. And at that point in time, the the tax rate uh, will be set by the Board of Supervisor, which would ultimately um, be what the taxpayer would pay. Okay. Again, like we said, exciting times for y'all every time it seems. So that's great. Anything else that you think that citizens should know before they go and check their mailbox at the end of the month? Um, I can't think of anything, Renee, but like, again, I'm just going to repeat if, it, if, and when they get it, you know, they can feel free to give us a call and we'll, we'll, we'll work through it with them. Great. Great. And again, a great group of people to talk to and work through this with. Yeah, Everyone just, just wants it to be right. You know, at the correct. end of the day, that's, that's what we all want. So. That's correct. Absolutely. Well, Sharon, Dale, thank you both so very much for taking time out of your busy schedules to join us on the podcast. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you again Thank for you. having us. Okay, great. And again, we're going to have at the end and in the show notes, all the telephone numbers, email or yeah, email addresses and website addresses. So you can get all of that information there. So again, any questions or any issues, please give these great folks a phone call. Well, that wraps up this episode of This Week in James City County. Thank you so much for tuning in. As always, please be sure to subscribe. That way you will never miss an episode. And also go online and you can go to our website. We're at jamescitycountyva.gov slash podcast. And while there, you're going to find all of our shows as well as a form that you can complete. Give us show ideas, comments, critiques. We would love to hear from you. So once again, thank you so much. And we will talk with you all next week.